And as I said, I'm Huey Poplock. Uh, my email address is on the bottom of the front page. <clears throat> I did send to Jim uh, a copy of the slides in a PDF format, and then also a file with uh, um, uh, kind of like a bibliography of a lot of the websites that I accumulated this information. Uh, the that sheet is was updated in April, and there has been some changes since then, and most of the uh, updates are are showing on the slides where it's appropriate. So uh, you might want to make sure you do get uh, copies of both. All right, so let me get started here. Uh, make sure I'm on the right place here. Uh, at the end of this, when you get home tonight, don't don't do it in the car on the way home. But uh, when you do get home, this is the only thing that I really would like you to write down. I think uh, most everything else you'll be able to get from those files. But I would like you to take a survey or it's an evaluation form, uh, whatever you want. It, it doesn't ask anything personal. I'm not even collecting your names. All I want is uh, uh, just some data uh, of all of the groups that I've uh, presented. So if you would go to this website, and I'll show you the link again at the end, and I also sent it to Jim, so he's got a copy of it as well. And if you'll go to that website, and it's a uh, Google form, and I would like you to fill that out afterwards. And be honest. It really has helped me improve this presentation uh, in the several months now that I've been presenting it to groups around the country. Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about my reasons for cutting the cord. Uh, a little bit about over the air or OTA, uh, including antennas and uh, a website to find out what channels you can get. Uh, some information about DVRs that are available for over the air. And then over the top or over the internet. And we're going to talk about TV streaming, hardware for streaming, streaming services, streaming channels. Uh, what you do about local TV, and then some other ways to get TV. <clears throat> and then we're also going to, uh, I'm going to mention about some 5G and some satellite constellations that are uh, brand new and the uh, that should be coming in the next couple of years. And we'll talk about some broadband providers and then also a little bit about telephone through the internet or VOIP. So cutting the cord means... Uh, Canceling your cable or satellite television service. It can refer to any number of methods, such as using over-the-air antenna uh, or a streaming video service, such as Netflix or Sling TV. Uh, <clears throat> there are differences from what you may have been accustomed to, but in the end result is you'll be able to watch your favorite TV shows, either live or on demand, movies and video. It, it, it is similar, but there are different ways you get to it. And it's not as easy, but you might be able to save yourself some money. And it can be some fun, although somewhat challenging sometimes. So cable TV alternatives. You got streaming services, you got streaming devices, and you got TV antenna. This is an early TV remote uh, with a remote control. I was the remote control back then. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when I showed uh, Robin, my other half, uh, she said, well, gee, I think I've got, uh, I'm a little bit uh, better than you were. But we had four remotes. So uh, if, if, and some of you, I'm sure, remember those days. Uh, if you had to get up and do anything, you had to get up and do it. You didn't sit in your chair to do it. However, in many cases, there was only one channel, or there might have been two channels, and you twisted the dial and then maybe played around with the rabbit ears to get the signal in. Here's an early TV schedule going back to 1950. Notice it signed on late in the afternoon, signed off at midnight, and it would sign off with the national anthem. Then there would be a test pattern, and, 
and some and a tone for a while, and then it would it'd be nothing but snow. And it'd be that way right up until it just before it signed back on the following day, almost uh, around five o'clock in the afternoon. So it certainly has changed since then. And uh, these are just some quick numbers. I know none of us really probably fit into that 18 to 24 year old uh, uh, age group, but that's what a lot of the TV networks and, and the sponsors and so on are looking at are, are the people that, that are uh, younger than we are, or most of us are. And TV viewing has changed over the last few years. And in other words, in the last in the space of last five years, close to half of, of that age group's traditional TV viewing time is migrated <coughs> either to different activities or to streaming. And according to Nielsen, that's the uh, company that collects data about TV, on the average, Americans have 189 cable channels and only watch about 17. If you think about it yourself, that's probably true in your home as well as in mine. Okay, this is why I began looking at cutting the cord. Back in uh, uh, early 2018, I got uh, a, a new bill, and let's go get a little close-up of what I got. One month I'm paying 165.78, and the next month, my bill was going to jump to two fifteen fifty six. So uh, Spectrum was my provider. I called them and I said, well, "Wait a minute, what's going on?" Well, what happened was I had a special deal, which lasted a year or maybe it was two years, but it but it ended. So now they're going to charge me the full rate. And I said, "Well, you know, I'm going to have to think about that. I I I, I I'm probably going to have to drop you." And so. They then transferred me to their retention department. And their retention department said, well, you know, we probably can get that down some. We get it down to 176.45. Well, then they sent me a letter. And they said, 176.45 plus applicable taxes and fees, which jumps it back up to about $192. And I said, you know, this is getting ridiculous. And so I started looking around at, at my alternatives, and I thought it would be a good time maybe to think about cutting the cord. And as I said, this is what they told me, 176.45 plus applicable taxes and fees. Just to show you what's going on with those things, this was in the news on September 7th, what's today's date? The 10th. This is three days ago. It was in the news that Spectrum is raising its TV and internet pricing, including the third price hike on its broadcast TV in 12 months. With this price change, you will now pay $13.50 a month for broadcast TV fees, up from $11.99. This will add up to about $162 a year. And what that means is you're paying $13.50 just to get the TV channels that you can get if you put an antenna up. Spectrum streaming TV services and TV Choice will see broadcast TV surcharge increase from $5 to $6 a month. And this is the third price hike for Spectrum's broadcast TV. Uh, it's going, you can see what the prices are going to. They're going to go up a couple of bucks on each of the things. And then to go along with that, here are some other uh, price hikes uh, since October. Note the date is subject to change at the last minute, but their digital adapters are going to going up a half a dollar. Uh, uh, the TV Select is going to go up, uh, what's that, $8.00. Uh, silver is going up uh, $8, and we're going up uh, about $8 on TV Gold as well. So Spectrum Standard Internet will go up to $69.99 a month without Wi-Fi or $76 with Wi-Fi. So that's going up about uh, uh, $5 as well. So the price keeps going up and up and up for everybody. 
So when I made my change, and I'm going to talk about this and, and, and get into this in a little bit greater detail. When I first made the change, and I did it over a period of time, I didn't just shut everything off. And I'll talk about that also a little bit later. But I went to Frontier, which had a special deal for one year of $30 off their regular $70 fee and you didn't and I didn't have to pay for the router so it's going to cost me forty dollars a month for a year and then I signed up for direct TV now which was AT&T's streaming service and that was forty dollars with some taxes and fees uh, actually it was all taxes uh, and that got it to forty three ninety five so I ended up spending when I first did this I was at eighty three uh, ninety uh, ninety five so I cut the cord, but I did it slowly, and I'm going to talk about that as we, as we go along with this. Just to show you what I'm paying now, my cost, uh, my, my one year uh, special deal with Frontier uh, evaporated, it went away, and, and it went from the $40 to $65.70 in taxes. And I decided to keep them. I was going to change back to Spectrum just for TV, or just for internet access. And they had a special deal for 40 bucks a month. But then I'd have to change out all of the equipment. And if I go back to Frontier, uh, I was going to have to pay an installation charge again. And I said, you know, there's not enough difference in there for me to worry about. So I went ahead and just kept Frontier, I've been happy with it. I've got Fios at 150 megabits down and 150 up. So I got the same speed in both directions. I am now subscribing to Sling TV, the blue, uh, which is $25 a month. Then I have the four for $10, which gives me some uh, additional channels. And then I pay $5 a month for, the DV, uh, for their DVR. And that gives me 50 hours of uh, cloud DVR, so uh, that now runs me forty three ninety four, and I also subscribe to something called Friendly TV, and I'm on the classic, so that's good for two TVs, and that has a DVR, and I'm paying six sixty seven a month for that, <clears throat> and I like my boxing, so I, and sports, so I, I subscribe to Dazone, uh, Dazone, D A Z N, Dazone which is $100 a, a year, or it's about $8.25 a month. Then I also, because I have a Roku box, and I'll talk about these things, I have a Roku box, that's, and they have their Roku TV, and that's free. Uh, Prime Video comes with my Amazon Prime, and I've got several others that I get. So I'm paying $124.56. Now you'll notice just below that I have Amazon Prime and Netflix, and then I also mentioned YouTube TV. I'm considering changing Sling to YouTube TV because some of the channel selections have changed and some of our desires of what we want have changed a little bit. But uh, not counting that, Netflix and Amazon Prime, well, I have Amazon Prime because I have a, uh, an Amazon Echo. And I buy a lot of things from Amazon. So that's not really counted in my TV costs. And so I get the Amazon Prime uh, channel uh, through my TV so I can watch a lot of movies and, and recorded TV shows and so on without having to pay extra for those. And then Netflix, I don't subscribe anymore to it, but all of the articles that I read is when you're figuring out the costs of cutting the cord, if you already have Netflix when you have cable TV, when you switch over, you really can't count that into your TV costs because you would have had it anyway. So it, it's, it doesn't fit into your savings. So uh, uh, even though you're spending the money, it's not really part of what you're, what, when you're trying to compare the dollars and whether you're saving money, cutting the cable, uh, cutting the cable uh, if you're subscribed to Netflix. And then my phone I have Google Phone, which doesn't cost me a dime, and I have Magic Jack, which every three years now is thirty bucks. Uh, so it's it ends up uh, it's, it's it's I'm sorry, it's ninety dollars for three years. So it's thirty dollars a year, which comes out to about two fifty a month. 
but I pay that every three years. Before that, I did it every five years, and I don't really need it. I just, because I've got that number and I use that number for some things, I decided to keep it. Uh, so let's talk about TV today. I added this slide when I, I, I did this presentation to a couple of groups and I kind of lost some beginners. And so I, I, I set this up so it would help you uh, if this is confusing to you. First of all, we have cable. If you have cable, you have some kind of provider for cable. That could be AT&T, Uverse, Verizon Fios, Charter TV, uh, Cox, Spectrum, and there's a slew of others, and there's local ones in different areas as well. That goes uh, to a cable box and a router for, uh, and or a router for the internet. And then you also have a cable box for the TV, and that then is connected to your television. If you have satellite, you've got either direct or TV or dish. And then you have uh, the dish and channel box, and that's connected to your television. And then you probably have somebody else handle your internet. And then over the year, you have some kind of an antenna. Uh, could be a rabbit ear, could be, the, uh, could be something in your attic, and could be something outside. Uh, uh, and then you have to have a wire then going either to some kind of a box or to your TV directly. So in order to stream, what you need is you need one of those, you need an internet service provider. It turns out that most of them are the same people that sell you the cable. That's changing, and I'll be talking about that in just a bit. But that's all going, in the next couple of years, that's going to change considerably. But in order to utilize your internet service to get the streaming, you have to have a piece of equipment. And it can be either an Amazon TV, an Apple TV, a Roku, Chromecast, PlayStation, Xbox, or you might even have a smart TV. And then once you have one of those pieces of equipment, then you've got to get some content. And there's a lot of it available for streaming. Here's just a few of the ones that you have to pay for subscriptions, which you got Fubo TV, Philo, AT&T TV now, which was DirecTV now, which, was, uh, which is going to be something else. And, uh, and I'm going to talk about AT&T in just a bit. Uh, now you got Sling TV, which is the one I'm using right now, Hulu, YouTube TV, which I'm considering. And then AT&T even has a very inexpensive service called Watch TV. Some of these subscription services may be available for some of the devices. For instance, YouTube TV right now doesn't work on a Fire TV or a Fire TV stick, but they're supposed to have an app by the end of the year, and so I'll uh, be able to do it. That's one of the reasons I've been holding off on switching to YouTube TV because uh, it is not available on the Fire TV at this point. Then each of the streaming services have plans that include some of your favorite channels you see a lot of icons there. Well, not all of them carry all of those icons. So then it becomes an issue if you're considering cutting the cord and you're going to use a service, you've got to figure out what you need and what you want to watch because that's very important in your decision of what service. And, and one of the biggest problems is that not every service has or not – on probably almost any service does not have everything that you want. So you've got to get some priorities in place. Uh, one of the biggest places where I get a lot of the information of what I'm talking to you about and how I keep up with this is a website called uh, Cord Cutting News. And they also have a Facebook channel as well. Uh, and I highly recommend they have some great articles and they almost every day there's new stuff out and you'll see some of the most recent stuff that I'm going to show you came from this website and this Facebook page. Okay, over the year, outside antenna. Uh, if you want to have an outside antenna, you've got to be in a place where you're going to get reception. Now, most of you probably are in, a, in the metropolitan area where you've got a lot of TV stations available to you. And by sticking up a, even a, a rabbit ears or something 
connect it to your window or sticking something in your attic, you're probably going to get a lot of TV channels. Well, that's not true where I am. I'm about 60, 70 miles away from most of the TV uh, antennas, or not antennas, but their, their transmitters. So it's difficult for me to get a clear signal from a lot of the network uh, uh, TVs without putting a, a, an outside antenna fairly high. But how do you find out that? Well, one way is you can go to a website like Antenna Web. There are others. You put in your address, and it will create a map that will look something like this and then show you where the local uh, transmitters are and how far away they are. And then based on your, uh, what in information you give them, it will tell you either it's red that's going to be very difficult to get, uh, it's going to be blue, which will be uh, a much clearer signal, or it will be a signal that's not going to be uh, pixelating all the time. And here are some antennas. The ones on the left are inside antennas. Some of them you just can you can just put against your window or along your window. Uh, the old rabbit ears, although they are somewhat electronically different than the ones when we were kids, but they work just about the same. The one in the middle and the one on the right are outside antennas. However, the outside antennas can go in your attic. Here's one of my neighbor's houses, and the top of the pic the antenna he's using is the one that's in the uh, in the center. It's difficult in the top left to see the antenna, so I did a close up in the, on the on the right of where that antenna is. Now he has no cable; he has no other TV other than what comes through this antenna. But he's getting about 65 channels. Well, not all of them are things that he wants. Uh, uh, but uh, he is able to get them. Now, he's got two TVs in the house, so he has to have a wire going from that antenna to both TVs. So you, he is, in some ways, dividing that signal up into two TVs. If you have more than TVs, that's something you have to consider when you're putting up an outside antenna. How are you going to get the signal to each of the TVs? Uh, one way is using a DVR or uh, a piece of equipment that you can use with the over-the-air. These are a couple of them. Uh, the Tableau is probably one of the more widely used. TiVo has one as well. Uh, and what you can do sometimes is, is, is use that for the uh, a signal and then via Wi-Fi from the device, it will go to your TV. So it may help not having a lot of extra wires going to each of your TVs. You could do it through Wi-Fi through one of these units. Uh, here's, here's the Tableau. Uh, they do have different sizes and different uh, choices, and you may have to do some uh, uh, research to, to de decide which one you want to have if this is the way you want to go. Uh, Amazon has one, they call it the Fire TV Recast. And again, uh, this has got to be connected to an, uh, an antenna. And uh, so you're not, it's, it's not a DVR for online streaming. It's only for the outside antenna. But it also will take that outside antenna and stream it to your other TVs. Okay, here are some of the providers of, uh, of, of uh, subscriptions. Some are free. Uh, Pluto TV, by the way, is free. And if you've got a smart TV or you've got a, uh, uh, a Roku or a Fire Stick now that you're using on your TV along with your cable, go ahead and install the app for Pluto TV, or you can actually run it on your computer. You sign up, get a free account, and then you can watch TV on your computer. You can watch it on your tablet, uh, your Android or iOS phone, or your iPad. And, uh, uh, and I've got a Chromebook, and I, watch some, uh, and I watch these on Chromebook as well. 
but uh, Pluto is free, so you can watch all of the channels. They've just added a bunch of channels as well. One of the drawbacks of streaming is pictured here in these three pictures. The one on the top left is what happens frequently that while you're watching a program, all of a sudden you start, you get the, the thing going around like it on your, your computer and the program just stops. So uh, they're about to tell you who the murderer is or they're down on the second yard line and they may cross and get a touchdown to win the game at, right at the end. And then it's the system goes black and you get that thing going around and around and around. Then it may come back, but when it does, they've already gone to a commercial and you missed to who the murderer was or whether they scored the touchdown or not. Uh, some of the other things you may see, it may say something wrong. We're having trouble displaying this channel. Check back later, so you have to go to a different channel. Sometimes if you go right back, it's ready. And sometimes it just doesn't work right away. And then sometimes it says it's taking longer than expected to load your video or whatever you're trying to load. Patience is appreciated, and sometimes you just have to stop and just go somewhere else. Sometimes it's not you. Sometimes, sometimes it's not your system sometimes it's not your cable and when i say cable your uh, internet connection sometimes the system's down and so there's actually a website called down detector that you can go to and type in what your service is and and where you are and you'll get something like this which will have a map for instance and you can zoom in on that map and it'll actually show you the areas that are having outages so you can say, oh, yeah, that's the area that I'm in, and that's why I'm having trouble getting uh, either uh, my, my streaming or a particular service. Okay, I talked to you about, uh, or I mentioned to you about AT&T and DirecTV now. When I first got interested, actually, you'll see there it says 65 channels for $40. When I first signed up for it, it was 35 within about two months, it went to 40. Then it went to 50. And notice it says starting at 50, and no longer does it tell you how many channels. Well, DirecTV now uh, is the streaming service from AT&T, and now they've changed it to be AT&T TV now. And AT&T now pushes... Uh, a couple of his subscriptions. You've got a plus at 50, and then you got the max at 70. And if you look at the website, they've got them going up to about $150 a month. But you can get more things. But you're back in the cable TV price when you start doing all of that. Then on top of that, well, I guess it's farther down. I've got another article about AT&T, and I'll come back to that when we get to it. Uh, as far as getting local TV on your streaming services, this is a chart that's on one of the websites, and the, the, the link to it is up in the top, uh, right, uh, well, actually top middle, uh, but it's also on that sheet with the uh, uh, other area or the other uh, links that I have. And let's move in a little bit and then actually move in a little bit more. Now, this is still saying DirecTV now, and it is AT&T TV now. But it gives you an idea, and, and some of these have gone away from that as well. But in different areas, different local channels are available. And on different services, there's a lot less or a lot more. So if you move around, uh, uh, down here in Florida, we have a lot of snowbirds, so people are are here six months a year and somewhere else six months a year. What they have to do is to look to see because that service will work in either place. They just have to have, if it's, uh, they got a smart TV, they got to have one in the other place or they have to have a Roku box or you can actually unplug your Roku box and take it with you. Some people do that. To, if they're traveling, they just use it in their hotel rooms. As long as you have internet and it's Wi Fi and there's Wi Fi available, you can you can still get the streaming using it. Anyway, but not, not all the local channels are available through some of the services. I have Sling. The only thing I get is a Fox channel. And then the NBC where it says yes, uh, 
in the Tampa St. Petersburg area, it doesn't say yes. And that's where I am in Sarasota. Uh, but the NBC is by on demand. I can pick up some things for NBC. None of the other networks can I get. Although ABC, I am able to get over the air using an antenna in my window. So that's something to, to keep in mind when you're, when you're looking at some of these things. Here's another chart uh, showing some of the same uh, services, but then the pieces of equipment. Not all of them work on that. As I mentioned, I think earlier, I've got a Fire TV stick uh, on one TV, and on the other TV, it is a Fire TV smart TV. And I can't get YouTube TV now on it, except the fact that the TV, that's the Fire TV, I have a Roku box stuck there, uh, uh, plugged in. So I have to switch the input to the Roku box, and then I could get the uh, uh, a YouTube TV. Eventually, this is going to change everything as I've been reading. By the end of the year, they, they'll have an app ready for uh, the live TV, uh, the Fire TV, I should say. And uh, so I'll be able to get YouTube TV on that. Then if I decide to make the switch, I can and make it easier. Uh, another chart showing some things about the big thing here. Uh, if, as, as I say, some of these things are out of date, but the simultaneous streams, and I've got an arrow pointed there, that's important because when you decide on which streaming you want, which service, you've got to bear in mind how many TVs you're going to have. How many people do you have in your house? How many TVs do you have in your house? And how many run at the same time? So if you've got three TVs and three people that watch TV, and then you're and you want direct TV now or now it's AT and T TV now. You only get two streams. That means the, the third person is going to get a sign on it saying too many uh, too many uh, services are in use and we can't provide that on this TV. So there may be a fee to get more. So these are things that you have to look at as well. So you've got to think about how many TVs you're going to have, how many people are going to be watching at the same time, and then how, what does that service provide? Some of them provide more, some for a small fee provide more. Uh, these are some of the choices that you have, ABC, CBS, obviously, but do you want A&E, a &E? do you want CNN, do you want Fox News, do you want ESPN, do you want uh, the History Channel, do you want... Uh, uh, in, in, in our case, Robin loves her Hallmark stations. I've got to have Hallmark. So whatever service I'm going to have, we've got to have Hallmark. So uh, these are some things that I, I have to be aware of as well. So there's a lot of choices. You've got to sit down with everybody in your household and say, what channel do you have to have? What network do you have to have? And you make a list of them and then prioritize them. And then you have to start figuring out which ones carry which of the channels. Uh, first of all, what piece of equipment do you have to have for that? And then what channels are on which of the services? Now, this, now I started playing around with all of this when I first started getting into this, and it really was confusing. I started making up my own spreadsheets, and I still got confused. And then, I, and then here's another website <clears throat> that CNET has that lists everything and tells you if it's extra money and so on, and, and that helped somewhat. <clears throat> but what I found, and there's a close-up of that a little bit more, what I found is this site, and this is suppose.tv. This is a very important website for you if you're considering streaming. Because what you do, and let's, I hope you can see my arrow, my arrow here, what you do is you look at the mo movies, and it can show more, or comedy, and you can show more, or music, uh, Spanish, specialty, and so on. And so under movies, the Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. So you mark which ones... You, you click on the ones that are must, and that puts it in the prioritized column. 
Then what you can do, since that's a prioritized column, you can drag these channels around and put them in the order that you want. Once you do that, you will get what the best fit is, and then you'll see some other changes. You'll see if I wanted those three channels specifically, the second choice is AT and TV, AT and T TV now plus the friendly classic, and that ends up about six, about fifty-eight dollars. Uh, but to get all three of them, I could get Orange Sling for thirty-five dollars. Well, there might be some more things on AT&T TV now that I want. So it might be worth the extra money. So you could, you've got to look and see. And obviously, the more channels in that uh, uh, or networks that you have in that prioritized list, uh, the, the, narrow, uh, the more it narrows down to which one you can use. But this is an excellent website to help you figure that out. This is where I was going, and I, and I thought I had it a little bit higher in the, uh, in the slides. But notice the dates on these two headlines, August 31st and September 7th, two days ago. AT&T is confusing AT&T TV with AT&T TV now, creating mass confusion. You can read the article if you want. Uh, but I just want to show you that all these things are changing so rapidly that even the companies that are providing the services are getting confused. AT&T, AT and I can't even say it. AT&T merges. AT&T TV now. AT&T TV logins for apps like ESPN under AT&T TV. Once again, causing confusion. It's, for me, even to read it, it's confusing. So it's uh, uh, these things are changing. It's very fluid. You've got to really keep up on it. And I mentioned the friendly TV, F-R-N-D-L. They don't know any vowels, I guess. But this one I, I subscribed to because it had all the Hallmark channels and it had the game show, which we're starting to watch quite a bit. And it has the weather channel, which I, those in, in itself for, for us was worth the $6 a month or $7 a month. Uh, I think I paid a little bit extra for some extra things, so I think it's six dollars. It's less than seven dollars a month for it. But I'm going to be able to, if I go to the uh, uh, YouTube TV, I don't think they have Hallmark, and I can get the Hallmark using this. So uh, sometimes you want to combine some of these as well. Again, these are the different ways in which you can watch streaming TV. You've got the Roku up here, and I hope you can see my arrow. That's the Chromecast. Chromecast works a little bit different because you have to have your phone hooked up and have it uh, on, on the Chrome browser, and you use the Chrome browser as your controller. Xbox is the Microsoft, and you can stream through it. The PlayStation is from, uh, I think that's Sony. And then the Amazon has a whole family of Fire TV. And then the Apple TV, in fact, there was just an announcement today about a new Apple TV and a service that they're going to provide. And I think their service is going to be like about $5 a month, but I'm not sure what it includes. I have not read that article yet. Or you might have a smart TV, and the smart TV is going to look very similar to what the boxes do, except you're going to have the cable TV as one of the inputs, so you can switch back and forth between the cable and then Netflix and, and other choices. Uh, then there's the, uh, a Roku TV is going to, uh, if you have a Roku, it looks like this. If you have a Roku TV, it looks almost the same, except you have some additional uh, things on here, like the cable TV box is going to be one of the connections, and a Blu-ray player might be another, and so on. Uh, on, my, on my Roku TV, I have uh, a, a Fire TV plugged into it, and I'm actually using it as my monitor for my computer, so one of the inputs is my cable is my computer 
Now, if you're interested in sports, this becomes confusing and becomes expensive, but you get a lot of things for it. If you're into NBA, uh, which is the basketball, uh, NHL, the hockey, MLS, which is soccer, uh, Fubo TV has just a lot of different sports in it. Uh, there's different pricing either for uh, the whole league or for a single team or even a single game. Now, you'll notice that I don't have NFL there. I just swapped out the, uh, the following things about NFL because they're just starting to come out because the season just started with this year's plans. Last year's all were scrapped. So uh, I went to Sling TV to their website to see what was on uh, for the different sports. And it tells you uh, available on Sling Orange, not available in your area, unavailable on Sling, and so on. So it gives you an idea that not everything is going to be available if you're using Sling TV. And that was on April 9th. Okay, but what if you want to stream the 2019 NFL games and you've cut the cord? Well, you've got a lot of things to consider because there's all kinds of channels and networks that are covering these. You got Thursday night football, Sunday afternoon football, Sunday night football, and Monday night football. So these are on different times, different games are on different networks and so on. Uh, here's the article. Uh, uh, there's more about the article on there. But whether you're joining the cord-cutting revolution, have a fantasy football dynasty, where you just, just live outside your team's market, you need a good way to get your NFL fix online. Unfortunately, while the options are many, they're also very complicated. And for me to go into a lot of detail on this, I'm not going to. But I did cut and paste a couple of from one website, again, this is from Cord Cutters, how to stream the NFL games. You'll notice that if you wanna watch Hulu, it tells you what's covered and, and what you can get, the NFL Red Zone on Hulu. Uh, watch Fubo TV and, and the differences there and watch Sling TV. And it goes on with all of the different services. So if fo football uh, is important to you, you wanna look these over and kind of decide what's best for you. But boy, if you're into football, you can get it all. But if you're not in, into football, you don't have to pay for it. You don't get it. So that's, that's good too. Notice the date on this. Today, AT&T TV now. I need to move something out of the way here because I can't see it. Let's see if I can do that. Hang on just a second. I can't read that headline. Well, I can turn over to my other TV here. And it's saying AT&T TV now and DirecTV could soon lose ESPN Freeform in the Disney Channel. So last night, and this is tip, this is last night because this is today's article. DirecTV and AT and TV now subscribers had a bit of a surprise if they wanted Monday Night Football. A warning popped up from ESPN saying Disney and AT and T are in talks, but Disney-owned channels like ESPN, the Disney Channel, Freeform, and more could be leaving AT and T TV services. And then I cut out a bunch, and then it says, it seems like AT&T has been negotiating hard with the broadcasters recently. A blackout with Disney would follow recent blackouts between AT&T and broadcasters, uh, Nexstar, and, 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 and just to name a couple. With cord cutting growing faster than ever, the number of blackouts, uh, this, this is going to continue uh, to both TV providers like AT&T and broadcasters like Disney. But Disney is coming out with their own channel, their, their own service, and they're going to charge. So they may not want to have let AT&T utilize what they're sending out or charge them a lot of money. So what you're going to see is you're going to have, not only is it they're going to be more choices but you're gonna have fewer choices within each of them. So you may have to subscribe to more. This is changing on a regular basis. As you, as you see, this is just in today's news, literally today's news. Uh, to change the subject a little bit, a little bit lighter and some of the things that you can get, uh, sample news channels uh, on Roku. 
Roku has a lot of TV news channels available, and they are free. But they are the news part of the channels. For instance, the ABC uh, Channel 7 in Sarasota, Tampa, or the Houston, or wh what are some of the other ones I've got here? Um, uh, a, a lot of these, they only have the news when you go to them. So if I go to the uh, Sarasota channel on Roku, what I'm going to see is like the 6.30 news in the morning, uh, the 10 o'clock news in the morning, the noon news, the 5.30 news, 6.30 news, or whatever whatever times they have news on. If it's live, I can watch the live newscast. But if it's not live right then, I can't watch other programs, but I can go back and watch the recordings of the earlier newscast. It's strictly the news part of that, but a lot of channels have that available uh, on Roku. And so if you have a Roku box, you can go out and sign up for them, and, and many of them are free. For me to talk about all of the streaming things, if I don't talk about these next two, I would be remiss in, in filling you in. But uh, uh, one of them I don't use, and the other one I have played around with a little bit, but it's on the, it's on the edge of being legal. So let's talk about them, and then we'll go on. Plex is one where if you record a lot of movies over the years, you have a big collection and you purchase them and put them on recording, put them on, uh, on your own hard drives and, and you have uh, uh, players and everything and you have your own library, then you get something like Plex and Plex is a server to create your own network. And you can then utilize it on any of your TVs. You can actually have it broadcast to your uh, mobile device as well, but only you can get it. And it has to be items that you own. Uh, but there is a charge for doing that. The other thing is you may have seen these little boxes for sale. If you go to a flea market, you go to a street fair, uh, people sell these things. Uh, actually for quite a bit of money, $200, $250. Sometimes I've seen them as high as three, three and a quarter. And they're a little teeny box. Uh, and there are services that are available, but they call them a Cody box because they use a free service called Cody, which is uh, uh, open source software. But then using Cody, they can download apps and install them on these boxes so you can pick up the latest movies that are out there, the latest TV shows that are out there, uh, in many cases without advertisement. Uh, however, some of the movies, number one, uh, they aren't available or you can get it, but uh, somebody's actually taken a recording of it with their camera in a theater, you'll see somebody walking by carrying a box of popcorn. So uh, uh, it's not the clearest, or it may have Chinese subtitles, or it may be uh, in Chinese and have Russian subtitles. So uh, you don't know what you're going to get. Sometimes it's, it's very clear, but it's all free. And it's movies, a lot of the movies are the ones that are right now in the theaters or just out of the theaters. And they're we coming for, for a few seconds. Sure. So you're back, but you were gone for about 10 seconds. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. I didn't go anywhere. I promise. No, Zoom <laughs> came up with a message saying our internet's a little unstable. Oh, okay. That's guy. I'm probably talking too loud. Uh, but anyway, these movies uh, can be very clear. They can be not clear. They may you may get so far in them, and then all of a sudden, it starts uh, with the little circle going around and around, buffering. Sometimes it it just stops, and you don't watch. You don't see the end of the movie. So it's not the best thing in the world. Some people enjoy doing it. It's expensive to buy the equipment. But all this stuff is free. Uh, but they're starting to crack down. Uh, a lot of it comes from Europe, Russia, and China. And they're starting to crack down on the service. And it's actually England as well, IPTV. And they're starting to crack down on the uh, services that are sending them. They don't cost anything. 
they don't make any money on it, but they're they're doing it. I guess they they like the pirate stuff. Anyway, so right now you might get away with it, but somewhere down the road they might knock on your door and say, "Hey, you're you're using all this illegal stuff," or your cable company or your your internet service provider may say, "Hey." Uh, you're using a lot of bandwidth. We look to see what you're looking at, and it's all this illegal stuff, and we're going to cut you off. So you've got to bear that in mind as well. Okay, getting back to the different providers, uh, you've got AT&T, Fios. So these are all the places where you can get bandwidth and, and, uh, and Internet service. Uh, and again, here are some more links, not links, but uh, logos of companies. Now, this is a very important slide, and I do want to spend a couple of minutes on this, and I know we don't have a lot of time, but let me, uh, uh, these are five very common cord cutting mistakes and how you can avoid them. The first one is rushing into cord cutting. Now, all of what I'm talking about might be enticing to you, but do it slowly. If you have cable now and you have a Roku, go ahead and maybe uh, almost all of the uh, services all have Seven day, seven day free. So I would take and do it one at a time. Don't do them all, but do one. Uh, say, uh, do YouTube TV, uh, YouTube TV, and then maybe uh, the AT and T TV now, and then maybe Sling. Uh, do them each for seven days. Write, write some notes down what you like about it, what you don't like about it. When the before the seven days are up, cancel, and you won't get charged. You may have to still give them your credit card at the beginning, but as long as you uh, cancel, you, you don't have to pay. And once you, once you get past that point, you're going to pay at least one month because they, they don't, don't have a less than a month charge. So you get, even if you're only going to go one day into that month, you're going to pay for the whole month. So, uh, but avoid rushing into it. Do it one piece at a time. Uh, if you've got a Roku, maybe try some of the free services first. See how it works. See how you like switching back and forth. Uh, another mistake is don't expect that cord cutting is going to work like cable. It's not all in one place. It's not you, you, got, one, you got one remote and you're done and you can find everything and it's easy to get to. You may have two or three remotes. You may end up having to switch from one service to another and it doesn't go quickly and changing from one channel to another is not looked like switching from one channel on cable to another. Don't want everything. Number three, if you want everything, you might as well stick with cable because the whole idea of streaming is to pick and choose. Number four, uh, don't look at the true costs of cable because uh, all of the, if you remember when I showed you the slides of all of the things that are going up in price with Spectrum, they have a lot of fees that they tack on that you don't get in with the cord cutting. And then, you know what? Don't listen to your friends. Uh, kind of try to figure out what you want because everybody's different. What I do, <coughs> what we do here. None of my neighbors would do the same thing, and none of you would do the same thing. They're, you're interested in different programs. You have uh, different levels of expertise in different ways of using the equipment and understanding of using the equipment. So just because your friend recommends something doesn't mean that's what you need to rush out and do. So these are very important. This slide is probably one of the most important in this whole uh, presentation. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, but not all of the U.S. has good broadband access. And uh, there's, I'm going to quickly go through this. Microsoft and some other companies are doing some initiatives to get broadband in some of the country uh, into the rem more remote areas in the U.S. And uh, this, uh, uh, if you'll look at the bottom, this was from August 22nd, what, a week ago. Uh, two week, less than two weeks ago, the FCC approved $4.9 billion to, uh, for uh, rural broadband improvements. And this is the chart by states. California is going to get $13 uh, uh, million. Uh, 
for uh, 1,300 locations. Okay, so what's coming? We got 5G and satellite constellations. How much time do I have? Uh, about five or 10 minutes. Okay, good, because I do want to get this in and, and I do want to have a couple of minutes for some questions. What's coming, 5G and satellite constellations. Uh, 5G is a technology, it's, expensive. it's actually starting to launch. Uh, you're more uh, metropolitan area. You may even have it in some areas in, uh, where you are. They've got some test beds out there. The U.S., China, and South Korea are expected to be some of the first nations to deploy 5G. Uh, AT&T has something they call 5G, but it isn't. So if you've got AT&T and it says 5G, don't believe it. Uh, but the 5G is going to be, a lot of it's going to be ready in, two, in 2020, which is not that far away. So in this next year, you're going to see a lot of areas start uh, becoming 5G ready. Uh, I got ahead of myself here. 5G is going to have a lot more towers than our current 4G. And by the way, 5G stands for fifth generation. Uh, the fourth generation is what we're using now, and that's the LTE. The 5G is going to be very fast. It's going to have a lot of towers. You're going to be able to have Wi-Fi driving down the street it, because there's going to be so many towers right in a row that you're going to be getting Wi-Fi uh, in your car. Now, as far as the constellation goes, Amazon's got a project, Kuiper. They're going to put up 3,236 satellites. OneWeb is going to have 656 satellites. And SpaceX, which is Elon Musk from t Tesla, He's putting up 4,425 satellites uh, and create an entire Wi-Fi ring around the Earth. And they're saying that it, sh it should be a lot cheaper than current Wi-Fi access. And this is happening now. SpaceX has already put up 60 satellites to test it. This is all going to happen in the next couple of years. This is going to happen in your years and my lifetime, even though we're getting up there. So we're going to see this. Uh, it's going to look like this. There's going to be just thousands of little satellites up there. And when you've got two or three companies doing this, they're going to be all over the place. This is what some of the satellites, the one web satellite uh, you'll see in the upper left. Uh, the other picture, what I did is I grayed out part of it because there's actually two satellites there, and I wanted you to see what one of them looked like and not get confused with seeing both. So it, they're pieces of equipment, and they're, they're fairly good size, and they're figuring they're probably going to have a, a life expectancy up in, in space about five years. So five years from now, there's going to be a lot of these things that are going to go dead. Well, they're going to put ones up there to replace them. But what's going to happen to the ones that are dead? They're either going to have to bring them down and burn them, They'll burn up on the way down, or maybe some pieces and parts. You're going to have to have some pretty heavy umbrellas, I'm afraid. Uh, so, uh, but this is happening now, and this is going to be available soon. And the one going back here, this Amazon's project, that's Amazon, the Amazon. So that's going to happen. Elon Musk is already happening in one web, I think, has got some, uh, they've already got six satellites uh, uh, deployed. So all of this is, you know, uh, learning all about what cable companies that are out there and so on. This is going to be uh, their competition, finally. So satellite constellations in low Earth orbit, or LEO, are thought to represent the next frontier for low latency, high bandwidth, low cost connectivity. Uh, cord cutting is changing very quickly. Uh, more and more people are, are cutting the cord, uh, and the, uh, the cable companies are losing subscribers uh, uh, very quickly, and they all have now some kind of a streaming service, but they're not getting the play that some of the other ones are. Now, what about your bandwidth? How much bandwidth do you need? This is a pretty good chart. Uh, what you have to remember is how many devices do you have? And when you start thinking of devices, it's a lot more than just TVs. Because if you've got, a, if you've got a, uh, an Amazon uh, uh, 
uh, Alexa, or you've got uh, the Google, uh, the Echo, or you got the Google Home, or one of the, I uh, see, actually, I shouldn't have said her name, she heard me. Uh, anyway, if you've got any of those devices, and then you also have some, some uh, power switches that are controlled, uh, you know, the Internet of Things, all of those are devices that are on your network that are using bandwidth. So how much do you need? It's surprising you don't need a lot. If you've got 50 megabits and you've got a lot of stuff on it, you probably aren't going to have any problem. And I have 150. I, I don't normally have issues unless we're streaming on two or three TVs and I'm trying to uh, do a, a presentation through the Internet and so on. Uh, it can get a little bit hairy, but not usually. But this is a good chart to, to uh, uh, take a look at. Now, what about phones? Uh, quickly get through this, and that should do it for us. Uh, you've got Vonage, Ring Central, uh, and so on for phones that are relatively inexpensive. I used Vonage uh, several years ago, and I think it was like $20 a year. And I can't remember if the equipment was free or you had to buy it. Uh, but I went to Google Voice many years ago, and that's free. If you have a Google account, you can get a Google Voice number, and you can have it in any area code that's available. And they're pretty much anyone that's around the country. And what I did is I paired it with this OB High, which is an OB which works with the Google Voice. It's got some software that I run that connects it, so I don't need to have the computer on, uh, and it works. And you'll see here that I purchased it in 2015. I've had a, a reboot it a couple of times, and I had to uh, reset the software, I think, once since 2015 in four years. And it's, it's plugged in. It's got a plug. It's, it's got a plug that goes to, the, to power. It's got a plug that goes to my phone system. And it's got one uh, that goes to the Internet. And that's it. And it cost me, I think I paid the 90 bucks for it. Maybe I got a deal on it. But it's around 50 bucks. As I say, I've been using it now for four years without any problem. Knock on wood. I also have a Magic Jack. And the only reason I have the Magic Jack is I've had it for, a, I had a five-year plan, uh, and that expired. So I'm, uh, and, and I had a year before that. So I had it six years, and I just about a year ago renewed it. Now, instead of a five-year plan, they have a three-year plan. But if, to buy one, it's $35, and you get a year's service with it. Uh, it looks like this. You've got a plug again. Once goes to the power, one goes to the Internet, and uh, uh, one goes to a phone. And uh, what I'm doing with my Magic Jack is I'm just – because I have a number that I've used on that for a long time, I call forward that to uh, my Google Voice number. But I also have an app on my Chromebook that I can actually use my Chromebook as a phone using the Magic Jack app. And so I can call and receive calls on my Chromebook as long as I have Wi-Fi access. Uh, and again, this is what their costs are. This is what I have. I have a master phone and then four uh, remote wireless phones in the house. Uh, the OB High connects to the master and so I have phones all through the house and if the phone rings the whole house vibrates uh, but that's how I'm doing it there are other ways to do it I've got fr other friends and I also have a cell, cell phone and my cell phone has Bluetooth and this phone system has Bluetooth and so when I walk in the door that pairs and so if somebody calls me on my uh, uh, on the home number, uh, my cell phone will also ring so I can even answer it. So truthfully, the house does vibrate <laughs> when somebody calls on that number. Uh, now, this information is very fluid. As I put this presentation together, topics, services, and hardware changed almost daily. You saw that in some of the articles that I just showed you. This presentation is meant to help you understand the big picture of cutting the cord the specifics may long, no longer be accurate, but I've given you a place to start your research to the best solution for your TV choices. 
please remember to fill out the survey. And if we have some remaining time, I'll be glad to answer some questions. Any questions? Yeah. If you have a question, you gotta come up here and talk into this microphone. No, you gotta talk into this microphone. Hello, Huey? Yes. Hi, my name's Mark. Hi, Mark. Um, I have a Roku box at home um, and two and I have well on and, and a regular TV with a TV antenna on the roof. Two things. First of all, there are certain stations like ABC that go out on me constantly and I, I, they're not pixelated. You mentioned a signal boosting device or an antenna uh, device, but you didn't mention how it works or where you connect it. Do you glue it to the top of the antenna with, with, with epoxy? Or I mean, I have no idea how they work or where you get them or you know, anything of that sort. I don't I think I said something about something to boost it. Uh, you can get stronger antennas. Uh, what kind of, how, long, how old is the antenna you have? Probably about 15, 20 years old. There's your, probably your issue. Uh, you know, with the technology and the signals changing and so on. And by the way, I understand this past week, a lot of stations, you've got to rescan your, your TV uh, because a lot of stations change something in their settings. And you may get it better if you rescan. The problem with that, I have rescanned a number of a number of times. The problem is every time I rescan, I end up with like a hundred plus channels, most of them in foreign languages that I don't speak. So I have to go back and spend about an hour deleting all of those channels so that oh, when I use the I know what you mean. Um, yes. Yes, that's that's really not very practical. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask is that frequently when watching movies on Amazon Prime, um, in the middle of the movie, suddenly I lose connection with Amazon and I, I have to start it up again. And then of course it picks up where the movie, where it left off, but it's very frustrating having to interrupt the movie two or three times before I get to the end of it. Any ideas? No, uh, that could be a, an Amazon issue. It could be a bandwidth issue. It could be just the nature of the technology. Uh, we we have the same problem here watching uh, even on the fire on the fire TV we're watching the game channel or something and it'll just go out we've got to switch channel and switch back and it's the and it's back it's fine one of our members here was also just telling me that he has the same problem with Amazon Prime but does not have it with Netflix so it could be an Amazon Prime problem and it could be it could be the app for the particular device you've got a Roku it might be the Roku app for them and if you had a uh, fire TV you might not have that problem uh, who knows and they don't they certainly aren't going to tell us. Bill you got to come over here if you want to talk um, thank you very much I appreciate it okay I hope I, hope I helped Hi, just wanted to ask a question about if you lose your internet, are you going to lose all of your phone service or everything? Both mics. Oh, I need both mics. Sorry. I don't know. This is I think I heard you say if you lose your internet, do you lose your phone? Down uh, and speak to both of them. Okay. Yes. If, yes, I was asking about the question. The answer was yes. The answer was yes. Oh, you, you'll lose everything. Okay, that's what I'm trying to ask. Yeah, if, if, then I use my cell phone because uh, there's still cell available. But uh, yes, if, if you lose your internet, you're going to lose all of your TV as well. But if you lose your cable and you've got a phone through your cable, you're going to lose that as well. So it's you know, you're coming through a service. If the service goes down, uh, you don't have connection. That's one of the reasons for not having all of your communication systems with the same company. Absolutely. I have a problem with my VoIP phone that it sometimes uh, the two parties are both talking at the same time as opposed to a regular phone. Is that something that can be cured? Something about uh, two... <coughs> Okay. Not okay. I I have a VoIP 
phone a, a uh, and it it's sometimes when I'm talking over it it uh, both parties are talking at the same time or nobody's talking and it, it doesn't seem to have the capacity right. that regular phones have to uh, let you know that the other person is talking quickly yeah sometimes you'll see that on, on cell phones where uh, and I'm not sure whether it's the services or it's the phones, but sometimes you can talk over somebody else. And sometimes they have to, one has to stop talking before the other one can hear. Uh, and same thing online. Sometimes it, you can both talk at the same time, but you know, you shouldn't. <laughs> uh, you should let the other person talk. And some of us have, and, I, and I'm guilty of it. Sometimes I just talk away and I don't give the other person a chance to talk. Did you say it into here? He, he asked, what actually is streaming? What is streaming or what, what does the term streaming mean? Yes, what does streaming mean? Streaming means it's a, a, an internet signal is being sent rather than a cable signal. And it's, and it's, and it's, li it's, it's happening live from one place to your system. In other words, it's streaming through a wire or through the air. How do you use stream, streaming? Streaming is, a, um, let's see, if you turn on your computer and you watch a YouTube, it's streaming through the internet to your computer. Streaming is on demand anytime you want, Gilbert. If streaming is, is sending the, the particular TV program, movie, uh, live TV, it's sending it uh, through the internet rather than through cable uh, or over the air. <laughs> uh, in the late 60s, some scientists wanted to show. Uh, put a satellite, uh, like a coffee can size, that would explode. I'm not hearing the question. Millions, millions Sorry. Millions are going to be spread all over, all over the, the, the country. Uh, the satellites. Anyway, they turned it and they decided not to do it because they didn't deal with astronomy and future satellites. Now they're talking about thousands and thousands of satellites up there. What is the big difference? Between those needles and those satellites, I think there's still going to be that interference and a chance of uh, collisions. I don't think he heard you because you weren't. Uh, I, I I could hear pieces and parts, but I couldn't. Oh, I didn't know that. Try, try your question again. Okay. In the in the late twenties, uh, there was a scientist wanted to set up a, a canister with needles, and when these needles, this thing was going to uh, explode. And the needles would circulate all over the earth. Uh, they would have interfered with astronomy and with future satellites, the possibility of collisions. Now, what is the difference between that and setting up these thousands of satellites? Uh, some of the articles I've read, uh, there's going to be a lot of them. When you look up in the sky, it's going to look a lot different than it does today or tonight. Uh, because there's going to be so many of these, you're going to look up and you're not going to see the constellations as clear because there's going to be so many of these little satellites up there. Yeah. Uh, as far as collisions go, yeah, the possibility, especially if they go out of orbit, uh, that exists as well. Uh, yeah, there's, it's, it's a new technology and there's going to be a lot of them up there. So that is a concern, absolutely. Leave it up to men to screw it up. <laughs> we need more women. <laughs> okay. Okay, everybody. Thank you. Thank, 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 you. thank you very much. All right. Thank you, everybody. I enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Don't forget, fill out the survey, please. If you have some things that I should have added or explained a little bit more or something, make sure you jot that down in that survey. That helps me. Uh, every group is different, but I hope I at least got you interested in the topic and and uh, and got you so you can uh, research it a little bit more and see if it's something for you
No, no. Um, 